Hi there everybody, so um, on today's video I'm going to be changing the uh, gearbox oil and the uh, gearbox strainer on this uh, Mini Countryman. This is a 2012 the uh, Cooper D 1.6 um, automatic and um, I was just looking at BMW's uh, recommendation here for oil and uh, so looks like this Mini has uh, the gearbox uh, GA6 F21WA um, and they recommend, well this is for the USA only, this part here and worldwide except the USA they have this down here so this is what I'm going with, um, this part number here uh, if you look at that, you will find uh, different oils out there. So I got a, I got some coma oil, uh, which is ATF red, um, fully synthetic, uh, that I'm going to be using. There is some other. This is for a different type of gearbox. This one down here, and there's even more down here. But that's going into the 8-speed gearbox, um, just different gearboxes out there. There's also this one up here for that gearbox there. Where is it? Um, that one there. GACBT 16Z. Um, so at the end of the day, they, they all use um, ATF. Um, so, I mean, probably better to get what you need from uh, directly from BMW, so you know exactly what you're getting. But my supplier actually gave me um, some uh, fully synthetic uh, ATF. So that's what I got. And I got um, a kit, which we'll have a look in a minute. Um, also, I was looking at uh, some torques, torque specs for different things. Um, oh, what is it? Which might need not there. We might need to for the sump and for the uh, draining plug and the filling plug. So draining plug, uh, oil sump, um, transmission, it's 27 newton meters if you have an M10, if it's an M18, it's 25 newton meters. Sorry, that's uh, all out there. And uh, filler plug to transmission housing, it's 25 newton meters. Oil sump to transmission is 8 newton meters for those little M6. And this goes on for other things. Transmission to engine, we're not doing any of that, obviously. Um, one thing I couldn't find is what is the torques for the the strainer itself. Oh, it's here. So, screw connection oil strainer. Uh, 11 newton meters. So, there we are. Right there, 11 newton meters for the screw connection oil strainer. I don't th even think I have a, a torque wrench that goes that low, so I may just need to be very careful when tightening this. Um, and and that's it really. From that point of view, we can uh, we need to get the car up and uh, start uh, draining some oil. Also, before we go to start this um, job, it says here top up transmission oil. Transmission oil has been drained. So this is pretty much the instructions how they tell you to pop, top up the oil. Um, so you can follow these instructions. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the amount that I remove and I'm going to replace that same amount um, because 
for this procedure you need to measure the temperature of the uh, oil in the gearbox um, which can be a little bit more it, well it's, it'll be very accurate but you need to make sure you can you can do that and uh, you know having the facilities and whatnot to actually achieve that kind of thing um, it also shows you it tells you to shift the gears from P to D twice for more than two seconds um, when you do so we are I am going to do this but uh, um, I'm just going to refill um, the same amount that I take out so I will be um, measuring the amount that comes out uh, so uh, let's let's get cracking so just to clarify something here um, this here is the uh, the sump the gearbox sump and there is two uh, sump uh, plug bolts um, number one here is for measuring um, the amount of oil if, if you follow these instructions uh, number two here is to drain the oil uh, that is something that I didn't know when I was doing this because I was on the day that I did it I was rushing a little bit I was rushing and I didn't quite get uh, to read this information properly here so that's why it's good to always prepare before you start doing the uh, the jobs um, and also I was uh, rushing a little bit because um, I needed to finish the job on that day now nevertheless um, this procedure here is isn't actually that bad it basically tells you to remove the m10 oil check plug that would be this one here and uh, that m10 it's uh it's it's got it's uh also torquing torque setting and this would this one here would be the m18 i think it said m10 and m18 so one was 25 newton meters the other one was 27 so that is what it's referring to so when you look at your sump when we look under the car we are going to see two um and again so in my video i might be saying i don't know what this plug is for but uh, now that i've checked <laughs> properly this here i know exactly what that is for so it says uh, remove m10 oil check um, from transmission oil sump and then the, it gives you the tightening torque then pour in automatic transmission fluid through oil filler plug until oil leaks at oil filler plug so you would fill the gearbox with oil until you see oil coming out of number one here then it says start engine and run at idle speed check whether ATF emerges at M10 oil check plug so then you would check if there's any oil coming out of this plug again if not continue to add ATF actuate foot brake and at idle shift through all gears P to D twice for more than two seconds then move shift to P position and then again check whether ATF emerges at M10 oil check plug check the temperature of the automatic transmission fluid with the BMW diagnostic system increase temperature at automatic transmission fluid to 35 to 45 C top up automatic transmission until it flows over it flows over from number one here and then it says top up automatic transmission fluid until it flows over screw in oil filler plug and oil check plug tighten tighten torques and whatnot so um it's not really that difficult but the thing is uh, you do need to make sure you know where the temperature is at and uh, 
perhaps you need somebody to to help you um, uh, to be underneath checking that the oil is because I'm working in a ramp and by going up and down the ramp it takes a while so by the time I'm up the ramp all the oil may have flown out of there so it does tell you that when you see oil flowing out of there a little bit then uh, close this so um, so that note I just wanted to say that before we begin the job um, and now we can uh, I can show you the, the whole video now okay so I got the uh, car up on the ramp and uh, I'm gonna need to remove this uh, cover down here so just these screws we need to uh, take out to loosen this cover so it's a few screws to take out to get this cover out um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then we can carry on okay got that cover off and now now I realize um, they were showing two drain two um, yeah drain plugs uh, on the computer one was 27 newton meters the other one was 25 newton meters I hadn't realized that there's actually two drain plugs here um, I'm gonna open this one release the um, oil here um, and then obviously we have to release all of these uh, 10 mil bolts that go around there to remove this uh, sump and then the strainer will be in there the uh, the kit that I got is this one here and this contains the strainer and it contains uh, a gasket as well a gasket that is there so um, also I just uh, spoken to BMW and they confirmed that these uh, the gearbox on this car is the GA6F21WA I just wrote it down there and the type of oil that it uses is JWS3309 which is ATF um, so I'm gonna be using that ATF oil um, fully synthetic I got some uh, comma oil here I had that too but this this one here it's uh, Dextron 2 and 3 I think what that was showing was um, 5 plus this one is semi-synthetic so I'll be using uh, this one here I'm not sure how much oil comes out so again we'll have to measure it I'm gonna measure it here and let's get cracking also actually before I open this something I wanted to say is the fill plug the fill plug is up here I got my tool there if it's a T55 it just sits on on there so to be honest I want to make sure I can open that before Uh, before I do anything else, <laughs> I'm gonna try and crack that open. So let's give that a go. There's not much room, so I think I'm gonna try to get a bar that comes out through here and then crack it open. It shouldn't be too tight. It shows 25 newton meters, but sometimes they are a bit tight, those, if they haven't been open <laughs> for a while. Okay, so I got my wrench in here and connected to the plug. So I had to, I thought I could come through here, but there's no movement at all. So I had to use this wrench that moves in, uh, in different ways and uh, <laughs> just managed to crack that open. So let's take this out and I'll show you how this moves. There is a, <laughs> 
there's this uh, cable here which I put this through there because it's a little bit high um, to manage to get into there but I think that did open Not that I can I don't seem to be able to move it but sometimes I have to do it with a tool uh, Yes, it is moving. So what I want to do is take it out, really. If I can take it out, then I'm 100% sure that it's open. So if you get the... So this is out. And one more thing, before we start draining the oil, make sure you have some sort of pump to pump the oil in. I have this electric pump I bought uh, a while ago. Um, it was about 20 pounds from, I think, Aldi's, or not Aldi's, but the other one. Um, don't remember the name of it. Little, little. This came out of little. It works. Um, the fuse bent out a few times, so I had to repair it, but it is working. Um, so I got this little thing I'm gonna be using to hook into that hole so I can fill in my oil. So we have the oil, we have the kit, we have some of the torque settings and we open the filler plug so now we can drain. Um, so let's get that open. Okay, um, let's get this open. I wonder if I should really open this one first because it may be that a little bit less oil comes out first. So that definitely looks like a, a T30. But this one here is an Allen key, so I wonder. I wonder if that could be an Allen key instead of a T30 because it's a little bit corroded and I can't really see. But I, I don't wanna, I don't really want to damage it obviously. Because the T30 kind of fits the Allen as well. But why would they put why would they put an Allen for one? and a torque for the other. So I think that might be just a little bit corroded. Okay, so that just went in. I think it was just corrosion, really. <sighs> okay, so just uh, crack that open with a little bit of a sort of a hammer movement there because um, if you don't do that sometimes, it just goes round. <laughs> right, let's try and Get the oil out of here and hopefully it doesn't come out in quantities that I'm unable to handle. Okay. Looks to be honest, it's looking a little bit black. with a hint of red, <laughs> I can see, but it does look very black. I don't know if we can s just about see it. There, it looks very dirty. 
for sure. So, I mean, uh, maybe doing this a couple of times, <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be a bad thing. So, for now, well, we'll start with this for now and then uh, at least it's something. Okay, that drained about three liters from what I can see. This has finished draining as well. So, oops, that's not one. Kind of finished draining. <laughs> um, it's kind of finished, so I'm just gonna put the little plug back in there, and now we can remove the 10 mils and get this out. There probably be a little bit of oil in there, so um, so I also want to measure whatever comes out. That's why I want to put the this. Um, plugs back on so I don't get any oil. If there's any oil moving here, I don't want to lose it. So, 10 new volts. This get tightened to I think it was eight newton meters or six. <laughs> I have to look at the picture that I took. Right. This three here might be a bit of a pain. The three there is a. Uh, three 10 mil bolts on this side that are sort of hiding um, from the subframe, they're sort of blocked a little bit by the subframe. So um, I'll try to get to those with a small ratchet or something like that. May need a spanner for this one. Didn't think I would actually get stuck um, trying to remove the 10 mils. Um, <laughs> that is a funny one. So, if you are watching the video, make sure you can release all these 10 mils first. <laughs> I think I just got that one. The one here, we can get to with a, with a small ratchet and uh, with a small socket. And then there's, there's one on the corner, also kind of blocked a little bit by this bar, but we can remove that bar if need be. But it seems like I just got grip on that. So, uh, okay, got two out. Today is a very hot day. Um, it's the day of the 40 degrees. I don't know if actually the, the record was broken or not today. <laughs> um, so I could have chosen to do this tomorrow, which is going to be about 26. But, but tomorrow I may not have the time. So I might as well just do it today. I 
I don't think I'll be able to torque this one anyway. But uh, eight or eight newton meters or six newton meters isn't a lot of force. Um, so, so the main thing is not to break, not to break them. Just uh, be careful when they get removed, when they get tightened. So some oil may drip uh, when we remove, remove these and also when we remove this trainer probably some oil will come down. So I'm going to try to catch it on my oil pan um, and then put it into the my measuring jack <laughs> which is an old oil. Okay, so funny enough, there is one more, um, I can just see, a, a bolt, well it's not a bolt, it's a screw, it's a Torx screw holding the, the pan in there. So I'll get that out. I think uh, I used a T27, but it, it might just be a T30. So that was there, next to the, uh, well, not quite next to the, next to one of the 10 mils on this side. It was that. So it seems a little bit odd that that was there, but uh, I was expecting a 10 mil be there but uh, there was no 10 mils to be seen okay so already have a little bit of oil dripping So there we are, there is some oil left in this pan, so so that's exactly what I wanted to be catching. And now I'm going to remove these ones as well, and there will probably be a little bit of oil coming out of there. And as you saw, we had to um, sort of uh, move the pan a little bit towards the front at an angle to get it out of there because of this subframe but it does come out and just do it carefully so we don't damage anything obviously now some more 10 mils in the area three of them as far as I remember the instructions Actually, these may be the ones that were torqued to 6 mil and the other ones to 8 mil. I'll have to check. I, I took some pictures, but again, um, my torque wrench is not exact, it doesn't go as low as that, so you can be prepared and get yourself one before you do the job so you can torque everything up. So I might not be able to torque everything up the way I would want to. But having said that, um, I may get one for the next time because I'm thinking um, this oil is really dirty um, and it would be probably worth changing this oil again in a year's time or so, actually, once it's uh, gone through the system and it's mixed up again. Okay, there we are. There's also some oil on this filter or strainer. 
but we are disposing of the strainer anyway. So we are uh, pretty much getting there because now we can start, um, we can refit our new strainer, put this some back, back in and fill up the key box and we're pretty much, pretty much done. This strainer actually does seem a little bit dirty. I can see the, the sort of filter inside of there and it's got full of, it's full of bits like metal bits but not a lot to be honest uh, nothing but it it, just, it does seem a little bit dirty so maybe that's why it and actually I was reading the uh, uh, manual on that on the computer and it's it does recommend to change the oil on this gearbox um, I couldn't see it on my service book I couldn't find it there or on my manual to be honest uh, but it is recommended on that particular um, uh, computer software okay so just now I'm uh, I'm collecting all the oil that I can I remove the the gasket from this uh, pan here I just uh, you just take it out basically just pull it out and uh, also I'm going to clean this pan and I'm going to clean these magnets here. You can see they are quite dirty. You can actually remove these magnets um, and they, there's a little, there's two bits here that show you where the magnet goes. That little there, thing there is a magnet and so is this one here. And you can see they're really, uh, they're really dirty. Um, maybe they, uh, collect bits of metal and whatnot. So I'm gonna clean this properly and uh, put put the new gasket here and um, be ready to refit things back. Okay, so how we're getting on here? Um, I've got the oil sump here for the gearbox. I've cleaned everything in there. I cleaned the magnets. Got the magnets in their respective places. And I just put the new gasket around. In the new gasket, uh, in a separate little bag, you will get these little things here. So I have one of them as a spare. Because <laughs> um, you can only fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So they will come separately. You just push them into the little, the little hole there. Um, those like, what are they, guide pins? something like that so just push your gasket all around there and then clean that up and then we are ready to fit this back into the car um, like before I was looking this is the drain plug here and on, on some cars there is another little tube that sticks up up to here and uh, that little tube helps um, uh, measuring refilling of the oil but normally you need to remove it in order to drain all the oil in this case scenario there is no stick there um, so now we can start refitting this uh, but we also have this one here so i'm gonna go ahead and fit that as well that is our strainer there. So let's get going. Okay, let's get our strainer back in there. Okay, so just remember, as shown at the beginning of the video, um, you saw the torque setting of that, I think it was six, six newton meters or eight, um, something like that. So just uh, torque that to the setting. I haven't got my torque wrench, uh, well, I haven't got small enough to torque that to that setting, but uh, um, I know more or less um, how much to tighten this. But yes, you don't wanna guess because you may damage 
the little bolts and and then you're stuck so if you you know uh, make sure you use a torque wrench if you don't know um, more or less how much to tighten these two these are delicate bolts so and I'm using a tiny little wrench here okay now we're ready for our sump I just uh, put a little bit of grease along the the surface here of the the gasket uh, just a little bit of grease or a little bit of oil um, just around it so it, so when it, when we shut it when we close it it just helps the rubber to slide in properly um, so let's try and get this in there now Okay, so I'm just uh, finishing putting these 10 mils. I was uh, struggling a little bit with the ones on the sides here. So just make sure you don't really fully tighten or fully close this until you have those in the back in place. Otherwise you'll struggle to get them in. And also, I really don't know why I have a Torx um, screw on this end. Um, perhaps that's something that one of you guys can let me know if your car has a Torx here or it's got a normal 10 mil, which would mean that uh, this probably has been out before, but but I wouldn't know why, uh, as I owned the car for the past uh, two years. So previous to that, obviously, I wouldn't know if the previous owner did some work on it or not. Again, you already know the torques settings for this, so go ahead and torque this up to the correct setting. And like I said, the one this corner might be the hardest one to, if you're going, you might not be able to torque this one up, but just uh, at least get it closed. Okay, I got all the 10 mils around, including the torques there that maybe one of you can tell me if that's supposed to be a torque or not. And now we can torque this to 25 Newton meters. Um, one of these is supposed to be to 27, but I'm just going to do them to 20. So I got, got them both at 25 and uh, everything else is on. Uh, just be careful with this one if it's a little bit corroded like here. Mm, now we can actually fill some oil. I'm going to measure how much oil came out and then we're going to fill that up. Okay, looking at my measuring can here, I can see this line here is four liters. This is uh, three, three and a half, uh, and this is around 3.8. Then we'll have uh, 3.8, 3.9, and four. So all in all, um, I would say around 3.8 uh, liters came out. Uh, because uh, give and take a little bit of oil that may have stayed on on the oil pan or on the filter or some that may have dripped but we're talking about uh, millimeters so um, I would say uh, 3.8 because this this might just be reading around 3.7 something it's not exactly uh, accurate to the to 100%, is it? Um, but 
this is half and uh, and between here and here that would be half but this is a little bit above that half so that's why um, I'm going for the 3.8 mark there um, so that's what I'm going to fill in there with my oil um, pump now I just happen to have I have about 4.1 liters here so I'll, I'll just drain this to four so I can get three here and then I'll measure uh, the 0.8 as well okay I've got my pipe onto the filling hole up there and that pipe obviously goes to the pump and uh, the other side is on inside of this which I already removed some so I got exactly four liters here once I start getting to the three liter mark so we can see there once I get to the one liter I mean uh, then I will have to stop and measure uh, the 800 mil but also we have to give and take whatever remains in this hose which won't be a lot but it'll be something else. so that fluid is fairly thin so it should pump in fairly quickly so I'm gonna let it pump I'm gonna do that process and then we'll come back to it okay uh, it's finished pumping in I got the three liters and the point eight so I'll just stop that now and we can remove this uh, filling tube from there and potentially we can just go ahead and fit the little fill plug I'm gonna close I'm just gonna tighten that uh, not to a torque setting for now but um, I'm gonna lower the car and then we can get the car through as it as it says get it through P and D for more than a couple of seconds and and that's pretty much it really so let's get this uh, down okay got the car down let's get this car started and uh, we're going to do as recommended we have it on P being more for, of a couple of seconds and cycle to D but we can of course uh, cycle through all the gears um, just listen for any weird noises but there's nothing going nothing should really happen plus we haven't unplugged anything and we haven't disconnected anything so at the moment the change was smooth and everything sounds as it usually does so that's been on D for more like a couple of seconds let's just uh, cycle everything I got reverse there and back to P so now what I would like to do is I'll get out of the car get the car up again and I will check for any leaks or anything like that okay so looking at the car from underneath I just want to look for any oil dripping there's nothing there and there's nothing around the casket this little bit here I already had that from uh, when I was fitting this back The field flag is just there. And there's nothing leaking from there either. So happy days. Um, I'm gonna go and uh, fit that cover now. And then um, I'll give the car a test drive and uh, see how we get on. It should all be fine. 
so all in all I mean if something is not right I won't really put the video up but if, <laughs> if uh, everything is okay then uh, I hope this video helps don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching and uh, pay attention to forks and uh, be very careful with all the settings try obviously don't damage anything um, so thank you for watching